Okay, hello everyone. We are live. Today is July 6th. Let me get working on here as you guys log in. I hope I hope that some of you can join, but it's a beautiful day out, so if you are out and about, you can catch the replay. All right. Oh, good. Okay. Lara's on, so I know we are working. Perfect. Let's get this going. All right. Hi, Laura. Thanks for joining. Um, it might be hot where you are. Um, it's actually nice now. It's really kind of um, steamy this morning where I am. Um, but you might be hot. I don't know. I haven't checked the whole, the whole weather of everybody, but, um, thanks for joining. Um, okay. I played pickleball this morning. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I played two hours. So 8.30 to 10.30. Um, and it was, like I said, steamy and humid. And, um, there, I came home and I told my kids, there's not one of my, my bot, not, nothing was dry. I was soaking wet. Um, Okay. Oh, this is flying by. All right. So we have Laura here. Hi, Debbie. You wish the order the... Oh, yeah. We're going to use a Scotty's today. I might convince you. You might want it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Debbie. A different Debbie. Perfect. All right. So we got people on. Yeah. So I'm exhausted. I was just saying I played pickleball this morning out in the sun, in the heat, and it drained my energy. And um, if I wasn't keeping eye to the time, I would have taken a nap. I would have easily fallen asleep this afternoon. So this is um, getting me excited and energized. Hi, Nancy. Perfect. All right. We have a bunch of people watching, so I will stop all that chit chat. And let's see. Oh, Laura wrote something. I make decorate tumblers, so do, going to do that for a while. Card me. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It's, it's like a craft that goes with everything. Perfect. All right, so um, I'm going to show you, it's like I have hopefully things kind of, you'll see, everywhere here to show you different stuff, um, and I know it's going to get messy, but that's okay. That's okay. Hopefully I show you everything, or tell you everything I wanted to tell you. Um, first, I was going to tell you, I'm going to show you, I have the project, so um the project I'm going to do today is just to show you some little hints and tricks on the, um, there's a plaid piece on that Scotty Dog um, stamp set that I'll show you. And I have all the projects. I'm doing a class on the Scotty Dog Christmas Scotty uh, bundle, um, a Christmas class in July. So kind of Christmas in July. Um, and it's in person, but it's also online because um, I know a lot of you don't live near me. And so that would be too hard to come for an in-person class as much as I would like that. Um, so the in-person is on July 31st. It's a Sunday. I had a misprint for those who um, had a letter with the catalog. The correct day is Sunday, July 31st at 1 p.m. at my house. But if you can't come in person, that's okay because you can make the exact same projects. I'm going to um, just record videos and then you can watch them at your own pace and you'll get all the... Um, papers and bags and boxes and everything you need um, for the class. Because I'm using ink colors that you should have, red and green um, and black. And so that's a couple things I'm going to show you today. So I think it might be better if I swish this down. I think you can see things better rather than me holding them up. So give me one second. You're going to see my messy desk. Make sure that's down enough. All right, and I have my little time. Oh, yeah, you can see everything on here and the time delay. Okay, so let me push this down a little bit. And then I think we might be good. Yeah, that's a little bit more in the middle. Okay. Like I said, everything is a mess here, but it's kind of kind of organized. So, um, I think this is the first week I could show you inside the catalog. So I'm focusing on today and also for that class, where is it? Here it is. Is this Scotty dog stamp set. It's not one I would typically buy. We don't have dogs. Um, my son loves dogs. My daughter's afraid of dogs, so we will never have a dog. Um, 
but I thought it was really cute. And the first thing I thought of when I saw this, and I wrote this in my email yesterday, were those Walker shortbread cookies. You know, like, I don't know. I'm a tea drinker. We I love shortbread, and this is what I thought of. So this is actually one of the projects for the class. And doesn't that kind of look like the Walker shortbread tin? Right now, this is not attached because I will attach it. Um, but I have to deconstruct the box for the video because the cool thing is, here I am going all over the place. Um, in the class, you're going to get a whole set of these. They're those um, note cards and envelopes. They're the craft ones, so they're new. These are in the annual catalog, but it's the craft note cards and envelopes. So you get it. 20 cards, 20 envelopes, but you also get this box in it because the cards actually fit inside the box so you can make a little gift set. Um, so, but I figured might as well use the box as a Christmas gift. So I will also give you um, the recipe for my favorite shortbread cookies. They're super simple and they're very delicious. So I thought that would make a little, um, a nice gift. So that's one of the projects. This I'll just do them as close to me as um, they are. And this is a little gift card holder. So again, I'm kind of focusing on the craft paper for this class. And then if you untie this, this cute little little jingle bell. If you untie that, then you have a little tag. So hopefully people would know to, un to untie it. You can write your little message in there. But that's a little gift card holder. So that's one of the projects for the class. And then you're gonna make two of these um, treat bags, candy not included, but I put the candy in just so you can see they're actually kind of small. So here's my hand, they're kind of small, um, but sometimes that's okay, you just want a few little treats. So I just threw some M&Ms in there. I stamped that little plaid piece, stamped that, and then I made easy tags. So this one, um, it would look better with those little, um, you know, the round peppermints, but I didn't have them. So I happen to have a couple candy canes. So I kind of broke them up to fit in there just so you could kind of prop wise, you can see. So you're gonna make those two. And you have this other box. Um, this is just a tag you can flip over. And then I'm just gonna slide this ribbon off. These are cool. These are also in the annual catalog. So this cover cups off this way, but you could also open it up this way. Just kind of neat when I was putting it together. So you have options, you know, however they want to open the box, but I think it just, it's nice. You just lift off the, it's a scalloped edge. All right, so you're gonna make two boxes, a gift card holder, two bags, and then five cards. So these, remember you get, this is for that class. You get the whole package of this. You're just going to make five cards in the class, but then you can go home and make a whole bunch more. So these are the cards. Christmas cards I do on the simpler side, especially for a class because you're making so many more. Um, I try to keep them on the simpler side. So there's that one Scotty dog. Here's a nice little plaid Scotty dog. Hopefully you can see some texture in the background with those trees. There's another one. I'm going to show you how I did this today. Um, little coat and then again this is simple but I kind of I like it simple I think any more would be too busy and then this guy so those are the cards so that is all for the class I just wanted to show you in person or on you know not just a photograph because I think sometimes you get a better idea of what they are so oops, um, I'm just putting them off to the sides of the room the deadline for the class both to go and in person is, I believe it's July 18th. The class date in person is July 31st. And then um, the to-go um, portion, the, you'll just have the videos to watch whenever you want. And then I'll mail off everything. And uh, did I say the price was $70? And if you want it shipped to you, it's $9 shipping. So it'll be $79. Okay, so that is that. So this is the stamp set. And I see that Tracy joined. Hi, Tracy. This Oh, and you also get, like the most important part, you get the stamp set and the punch as part of the class. And you also get uh, the ribbon. So you actually get quite a lot in the class. Um, so all the stuff to make the projects plus ribbon, stamp set, and punch. 
like the most important part I forgot to tell you. All right. So hopefully I don't make too much of a mess here. We'll start with this one. Oh, and you get one more thing. Wait, there's more. Because it's celebration, the products add up to over $50. You're going to get a free pack of, oh, it's hard to see. Free pack of its six by six um, silver and gold paper. You can kind of see it better here because you can sponge it, you can stamp on it, you can leave it plain. Um, but everyone will get who does the class will get a whole package of that as well. I'm not using it in the class, but you'll get it, and um, you can make other stuff with it. So you do get a lot. All right. So what I wanted to show you today was um, this kind of I say plaid. I guess it's plaid um, stamp. I have my blocks already. You can do some fun things with it. Ooh, my blocks are stuck together. So you can see I've used red quite a lot. Um, it's stained, but it works perfectly fine being stained. And actually, let me show you this before I show you the plaid. So I played around. There we go. Let's see this better. I played around. Um, so I, this is the, the there's three dogs in the set, right? This is the dog that lines up with the punch. So this is the dog I did. So um, I have two black inks. I have Memento, actually I'm here to show you. I have Memento Black. So I did that one first um, because it washes off. It's not a permanent ink, so I figured um, I started there. But, and it's black, but it has like some gray hues to it. It's not a solid, like you can see some white through it. So then I tried the stays on and it's a much better, much better black. Um, so that's this one. This is a permanent ink, which means, so now you see that my stamp is permanently black, but that's fine. There is a stays on cleaner that I use on all sorts of things. It actually removes a lot of inks and, and stains. Uh, oh, I'm glad you like the sweet now, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> all right it's cute uh it's a little different than what i usually do so we'll see um so that was memento this is stays on and this one i did is basic gray and it has like this one it's a much more solid color almost like black paper um whereas this one has some um shagginess to it i guess so you can do whatever you want with your um Scotty dogs, you can even make it pink or you know, do whatever you want. But I just wanted to show you the different blacks. So again, that's punched out memento and that's punched on stays on. So there is a difference. So I'm going to use the stays on today. Um, I might actually miss memento for one thing, but we'll see. All right. The other thing that's important is these are photopolymer stamps. So they're thin. Um, I don't have any red rubber up here, but the red rubber ones would be red rubber plus they have a like gray foam kind of on top of it so the width is thicker so you already have a little cushion whereas these are really thin so I use um it's covered in paper but um in my sight line um these are i think they're called stamp and pierce mats and i think they're five dollars uh stampin up sells them i'll find them in the catalog but they're great for photopolymer especially because you have this it's a big solid image so you really need a good pressing so that's where these come in and then you'll see later why i have this covered with paper because otherwise this would get all inked up and sometimes the ink would transfer over Okay, here we go. So this is the first card I'm going to show you. It's just a tiny little three by three. Sometimes, oops, get all sticky. Uh, sometimes we, oh, that's all we need, a little three by three with some treats or something. But I'm going to show you how I did this ribbon. Oh, this bow has a little plaid in it. And I also did some plaid on my envelope, which it's not perfect. And I'll show you um, how to hopefully make it close to perfect. You have, um, these are three by three envelopes. You get a whole pack of 40 in it. And those are in the annual catalog. I just cut cardstock, um, six by three and scored it in half, 
three. I like to hold them this way. I've showed you that before so they don't really flop. So I'm going to stamp it with it flat. All right. So let's find the right dog. Stays on, comes to the cover, comes off, and then you have this little plasticky thing. So just kind of put that where you don't get ink everywhere. And it's a different, it's like a felt surface, so it's slightly different. The other thing, I already did it, so we should be fine. Um, with my blacks especially, I like to re-ink often um, because I like the solidness of it. So the, they have a, it's a stays on re-inker. And you just put it on top. Sometimes with the other ones, I take like an old credit card or gift card and kind of um, put it in. But this one just kind of seeps in pretty good. And they also sell re-inkers from Memento. So I had actually re-inked that one. So they were pretty well inked, but I just find that this one's better. Okay, actually, before let's stamp Merry Christmas first so I can center it in there good. So I'm just gonna do the same thing I did. I'm gonna do Merry Christmas with the Garden Green. Center it there. So now I'll know where to put my little doggy. All right. So one thing I did, let's see if I, I don't know if I brought it up. I, I after I inked it, and usually I'll, the other ink pads, like I just go like tap, 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 and that's enough. This one I'm really inking it and I'm looking at it just to make sure I get good coverage, which I do. I had another one, I had swiped it down, but that gave me all sorts of lines. So don't do that. You just want to kind of go up and down and really give it a good press. Stamparatus would be, work great because if you needed to re-ink it, you could. And for some reason with this ink, it like peels off. But you get a really nice saturation there. Alright, I'm gonna put that to the side. We'll be using that again. And then I'm just going to do red. So this stamp set comes with a collar that fits all three of the dogs. So that's what that little thing is. And it does have a slight little curve, so you just kind of go with the curve of the dog. Um, it comes with this bow corresponds with the punch. And then these are two smaller bows that you can, you know, you can use on, I suppose, really any of the dogs. This one I haven't figured out. So if anybody knows, please let me know. It's obviously a bow, but it has this little, like, inlet. Like, so something's supposed to go there. So I don't really know what it's for. So I haven't used it yet. Um, so if you have figured out how, what works with this one, please. I don't think it works with those. Maybe it goes on that, I don't know. But if you figure that out, please let me know. Um, okay, so I'm going to use, I'm gonna do the collar first. So I'm just gonna lightly tap. I'm gonna push this closer to my head just so I can, I'm looking through, so I saw that white stripe. So then I have a little white there. So because I'm using red and black, it's okay if I stamp twice because the red's gonna disappear on that black. All right, so here's, oops, one of the things that we're gonna do. I probably should have showed you this. Actually, before I show you that, I'll show you how I did this. No, I won't. Okay. It's the same process. It's called kissing in the stamp world. So I'm gonna take my plaid, I just inked it. I'm gonna leave it there. And I'm gonna press this stamp on, just try to look through to see if I got a pattern, straight down. So you can almost see that there's a pattern on there. I like to huff on it just to make sure that I get moisture in there. And I'm gonna stamp it down. So then I get this little um, plaid bow. Now I could have extended it and done the plaid with the um, some scrap paper, but it's the, on the collar to make oh, this much. 
let's see. I'll go where I didn't stamp it. But it's too... Um, well, actually, I got a little bit, so I suppose I could have done that. I got a plaid on the collar. So then I would... I could have done that. Oh, well. I'll do that on another one. Here. Do I have one more? I do. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Where's my black? I need a bigger table. All right. I'll do the Merry Christmas after. <gasps> oh, no. I just dropped the black ink on the floor. I'm rushing. Oh, I lucked out. Okay. All right. So actually I can show you another trick. This is not a perfect stamp because I was rushing it and I'm going ahead of myself. Um, I'm looking for, here it is. You can take a black Sharpie I'm gonna color it in a little bit. This is a bigger area, so you might end up seeing kind of where I color in. But if you have a little spot, you can just cover it with a black Sharpie. All right, so I wanted to, let's see what the collar looked like with the plaid. look good. So each time I do the kissing and the plaid, you want to wash off. I'm just kind of stamping off because you want a clean surface. Oh, I did a different stamp, didn't I? I did. So I did two different dogs with that way. So actually it does work with the collar. Good to know. This is very messy. I won't use this for anybody, but it's very messy, but I wanted to show you the process. All right, I'll just get ink off me here. So that's one way of transferring that. And the other way, I'll just flip this over, get me on a mess. So I'm going to, where is, this is where, oh, okay. I haven't stamped with this one yet, so I don't have to wash it off. All right. So the, I know this is clean because I haven't used it yet. So if I wanted just like a red checkered dog, so I stamp that, good. I'm going to kiss them together. So straight down. I like to huff on it. And there I have my little plaid dog. So I think it's kind of fun. So here's one that I punched out. And I had done one of the um, cards for the class that way too. All right, so let me, I'm going to use, this is a different stamp scrub. So you saw me with my chamois, which I use a lot. But when I use stays on, I like to use the Stampin' Scrub because of the permanent ink my chamois would get all um, stained. So you use a stamp, this is really old, a Stampin' Mist with a Stampin' Miss Scrubber, I think it's called. So there's a like a wet side and a dry side. This is how we used to always clean our stamps, and then it's clean. In the corners, like there's little um, water drops on this one and a sun on this one. So I just took a paint marker in blue, so I know that's, the, that's always my wet side. And then Many times I use it and then I'll just rinse it with hot water just in the sink and all the um, the ink, oh, I'm getting everything everywhere, the ink tends to um, just run off and that's how I clean it. Some people put them in the dishwasher. I have never done that, so I can't attest to how that works. All right, I don't have room at all. Okay, so the next one I wanted to show you, minus the ink I just got on my ribbon, was the little doggy with the um, coat. And so here's another one. I have two different coats, so you can kind of play with it. Make sure I have all my pieces here. This one I kind of partly prepped. Here we go, this is what I want, okay. So I'm using this dog. And I'm gonna 
use that same white paper. So I'm going to, actually I guess I don't have to because I already have one. So I stamped him and I cut him out with scissors, him or her, cut him out with scissors. So then what I want to do is stamp the plaid. Okay, and then you can do this. I don't wanna. The first way I did it, I actually used a die. Where is he? It's so neat. Oh yeah, here's one with a red plaid dog that is not rushed. I did a nice job. And then that's the little coat. So there's an oval die. So I stamped this and I just cut it with the oval die. And then I'll show you what I did next. But I discovered I have an oval punch. So I'm just going to punch. And actually just, I'll show you, you just, you really can get two in there. The bigger oval, there's a little white, but that's okay. So I punch the oval and then where do they go? Oh, here they are. So the oval one, oh, the, the oval scallop one ends up being a small coat than the bigger one, a bigger coat. And I'm doing two different things. Hi, Penny. Let's see who else has joined. Thanks for joining. I feel like I'm like a little sporadic here, but there's lots of fun things to show you with this. Um, and I just realized, do I have black paper? I'm just dropping everything. I'm gonna show you this on two. I just cut the black paper. I just realized I have two different examples to show you. I have this dog which I apply this a little differently than this one. So I said, I might as well show you. So I'm just going to all right, do it this way. So you need glue. So I'm just gonna actually glue, hopefully that's enough room. Glue that just the tip of that onto the paper. And I'm gonna glue this one, just cause I'll do two to show you, on here. And then you put your dot, your punch, your paper in. So the reason why this bigger scallop one it has a smaller coat is because if I made it a bigger coat, then you're gonna have a coat partly on the tail. And if that's okay with you, that's fine, but I don't think coats do that. So then I just had to make it a little bit smaller so that the coat is not on the tail. So I'd say about there. So, oop, that glue didn't stick. We'll just improvise. I did too much. Same with this one. So this one, you can have a bigger coat. So my coat is right there. Because of the glue and the layers, it's harder to punch. And then there's my coat. So that's how I did the one with just a, a black cardstock dog. But how I did, let me actually move that. How I did this one is slightly different. So I also going to show you, you don't have to have it be just two colors. So you can take a blends marker and color right over your paper. So that's what I had hurt my thumb from punching. That's what I did with this one. So it's the same thing. I punched out the circle, the this one, and I colored it with my light navy blends, and I just glued it on there. And I did that ahead of time because um, the glue needed to dry before I cut with scissors. So now I'm just gonna flip it over and just follow along with the 
edges of the dog. So then that's how I get that little coat. And then you just make up your little tag. So I just glued them right on there. And then I just punched out um, the bow right here with the red glimmer paper. Thank you, Lara. I was pretty pleased with it. I spent all of <laughs> July 3rd working on this set. <laughs> We didn't have any plans. Oh, and I need the little collar for the dog. So where is the little collar? I'll do that red. Oops, missed. And again, there we go. And then I'll just use a little dimensional. I'm just gonna cut the piece. Actually, the bow use this bow. You can do a whole dimensional. And put that on there, and then I can put it on a little tag. So isn't that cute? Like a little little Christmas tag. All right. So that one's that one. The next one. Some of these I can just show you what I did. So like this one, I just stamped that same plaid on, um, this got cut off a little bit, but uh, the square die. And then I just stamped the black dog right on top of it. And then I just stamped the green bow. Same with this one, same thing. I just used red paper, red cardstock with just the background of that plaid square. I stamped the dog in black and then I just punched out of, let's see, do I have any extra plaid? I don't think I do. So if I stamp that, and then I just, you can use, I just did a bow that way, and I got that plaid bow. So you get a couple bows out of that. So that's how I did those two. And this is the same. I just stamped the bow with the stamp, which is in the stamp set. Oh my my, this is getting crazy. So I just stamped this bow first on red on red and cut it out. So you can kind of get different looks with that type of, that's just really using it as a background. This guy, I stamped the black dog right on here, kind of like here, but then I punched him out. So I have a little plaid background on the dog that way. So then you can see what it looks like on a tag. Again, just for a different look. And then I would put a bow on him. And then this one, I stamped the same plaid, this, I use black ink. I used the memento this time because um, I knew it would wash off and I just stamped it on red cardstock and then I cut out the dog with a punch. But I want to show you what I did with a ribbon on this one. Just looking for ribbon. I, I didn't, I thought red would be too much. And then I was looking at black ribbon and I have this black ribbon, which I love, but it's retired. But I did think that would look kind of pretty with a sparkle. So then I looked around to see what do we have that's not retired. So I have this black and white chuck. Uh, let's see, hold on, I wanna go back to questions. Uh, thank you, Nancy, cute tag. Was there ever or is there ever a set like this with a cat? <sighs> there is a cat punch. They did have some cat sets, which I did not have. Um, I don't know if they had like a plaid part of it, but they did a couple years ago. If anybody who's watching knows the name of the um, set, but you could probably even Google, um, Laura, there, there's a, um, I think it's still current. The Cat Punch, I think it's still current. Oh, it's not. So it must've just retired. There was a Cat Punch 
um, so you just, just do Cat Punch Stampin' Up and you would come up, um, and there were at least two sets with a cat. One was, one might have been a Halloween set, but I know there was one or two that were regular. Um, but I didn't have it. That's why I don't remember the name of it. Okay. So what I did with this ribbon, and you can do it with any color, but I, I tried it. You can color it. So I colored it with a red blends, but I thought that would have been a little bit too busy with a red and black. Well, now it's not as busy, but then I colored it with the black blends. So I first tried it with the, the lighter, this, um, the light black, I think, that, I think it is black. Yeah. Light basic black. And it first goes on dark and then it will lighten up and it was a little light. So then I tried the darker, just do it over scrap paper. And they'll lighten up a little bit, but they are, this part's a little lighter. But that's how I got this ribbon. So I thought it looked kind of fun with the two checks. Not too overwhelming, but that's how I did that. Although I like the glitter ribbon. But you could color any color. You can do this. You can color in our ribbons like tons and get all sorts of colors. Uh, Tracy has a cat punch and a large dog punch. Yeah, oh yeah, there was another dog punch too. Um, they both had like the tails that went up. Um, they weren't that long ago, so they're fairly recent. I just want to make sure. I think that would have been what I was showing you. I think those were my samples. So I showed you the kissing where you take the stamp. Let's see. I lost it. Take the plaid stamp, you ink it, and then you take a clean stamp and you kiss it together and then you stamp it down. I showed you how to put the little coats on the doggies. Where's the other one? And then I should, the other kissing, oh yeah, I'll show you the envelope. Was The other kissing was here. So the envelope I want, that's I think the last thing I really wanted to show you. So you need either scrap paper or Post-it note is like a little bit too small. Doesn't quite make it, so you can move it, or I have one more envelope. Here it is. Or you can just take a piece of paper and then I'm gonna put it right on the edge of the fold. And then you can either tape it down or put something on top of it so it doesn't move. And then I took the red plaid and I'm going to stamp on top of my scrap and then below. So you definitely want scrap underneath. So you get that. But how the plaid works is so they're interlocking so I can carefully going to follow, like I'm going to follow this grid and then follow those grids and hopefully I want to close up the hole. On camera, it's a little nerve wracking. All right, so I have a little bit of a seam. Where did my other... That's my other envelope. All right, so this one had a little seam too, but I just put a dog on top so you can't see it. But where my, I didn't um, stamp far enough down. So I used that and I just didn't cover that part. So I could even, let's see, how would I cover that seam? I would just use part of the dog. which was not a very good stamp. But anyways, that covers the seam. So then you'd have the little dog on the envelope. So you take a little practice with the um, matching the grids, but you can, they do work. It just takes a little practice. All right, oh, thank you, Tracy. So Laura, May 2021 to April 22 catalog has the um, dog and the cat in it. 
Oh, you found a cat, which is from Halloween. Yes, there was one in the Halloween set, but there was also a non-Halloween cat. Um, Karen will watch the replay to see what you missed. Awesome. You're missing a mess is what you're missing here, but that's okay. Um, I gave you a couple pointers on. Let me kind of put down here what we've made. Hopefully that's somewhat helpful. Different ways of using that plaid. Um, I really, oh yeah, here's more of the doggies with their little coats. I played with it, you can put little, um, this is just the black cardstock punched out, which makes it a little easier sometimes. I tried a little gem, you can make little eyes on them. The other thing I tried was I embossed. So I did a couple things. So I heat embossed, I just did clear on the black, but honestly, I don't think the effect is worth it. You really, it's, I think just the plain black paper works better. So it's not worth the work. And then I did, I dropped some of them. This didn't come out. I tried that kissing with the embossing. My black embossing powder is not, I don't know, it wasn't working so good. So it kind of works, but it takes a little patience. I dropped my other pieces. So they're not here. Um, but again, I don't think that was worth it either. I think just straight doing it with the ink works better. Alrighty. So that's kind of what I had for you today. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Karen. I'm glad you like the ideas. Um, yeah, definitely watch it again. And it takes a little bit of playing, but it's kind of fun. Um, I made quite a lot of them. Here's like a more of a finish card with the, with the, um, the coat. And then I did the, yeah, and then you can color it in. So this one has like a blue and red plaid, so you can kind of play with the tartans, the different colors. You could definitely, I just kind of scribbled, but you could definitely do, um, seeing if I have any paper here, we'll just use this one. You could definitely do, you know, like stripes of different colors and get in the different plaid, because um, I know there's different meanings for different plaids so you really could kind of have fun with it all right so let's see i showed you at the beginning um the samples for the class that's coming up and that is also on my website i'm happy to um send you more information if you want it celebration is going on so any fifty dollar increment of product purchases gets something free from the celebration catalog so there's um Things you can choose for like $50. And there's also things you can choose for a hundred dollars. Oh, oh, that's a 50. For a $100. Here we go, some, some dies. Or if you spend a hundred, you can pick two fifty. Um, that's a hundred dollar one. So, and there's no limit. So you can get lots and lots, lots of free stuff if you want. And that's good for July and August. Um, yeah, I think that's what I had for you today. Yeah, so I'm going <laughs> to be busy cleaning up my mess. Um, thank you very much for joining me on this summer day. I really appreciate you guys watching and joining me live. And also, I appreciate you guys watching on the replay. Um, if I missed anything, you need clarification, just write stuff in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Or you can send me a direct message as well. All right. Thank you very much for joining and have a great week. I will be back next Wednesday um, showing a different holiday or something different from the um, holiday catalog. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. It won't be the Scotty Dogs. I'm going to do something totally different. Um, and so I'll get to play with some of my new stuff. So thank you. Have a wonderful day and have, um, happy creating. Okay. Bye-bye.